Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us today for our Mobile Perspectives webinar with AFL, uh, where we'll be talking about building a full funnel marketing strategy uh, for gaming apps. Uh, my name is Michael, and I'm the APAC event manager at Adjust, and I will be your host for today. Um, this webinar is designed to be very interactive and engaging, so we strongly encourage you to participate uh, as much as possible. Uh, during this webinar, you'll be able to answer questions from your speakers, and you'll also be able to ask questions back at the end of the session. If you do have a question, uh, you can click at the bottom of your screen, there should be a Q&A button and you can ask it there. Alternatively, you can also type your question to us in the chat window, but we prefer if you do it in the Q&A. Also, we kindly ask that you refrain from recording the session for privacy purposes. Um, from now, I'd like to move on and introduce to you our speakers. So uh, from Adjust, we have Shabam Jha, who is our sales manager in India. There he is. And um, from AFL, we have Anki Rawal, who is the uh, Director of Business Development and Partnerships at AFL. For today's agenda, uh, we'll be doing a short introduction of Adjust and AFL. Then we'll be talking about gaming industry trends uh, globally and in India. We'll talk about some key challenges of marketing a gaming app. Then we'll discuss a full funnel marketing strategy for gaming apps. We'll also discuss additional tools that you can use for re-engagement. And we'll talk about deep links and reattribution logic and settings. This will be followed by a summary and finally a Q&A session where you'll be able to ask your speakers anything that you want. Um, that is all for me. So please uh, enjoy and I'll hand it off to Shabal. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, so before I start off uh, with, uh, you know, what has pandemic bought, what are the gaming verticals growing, how much they are growing and all those stuff. Let's first drill down on what exactly Adjust is, right? So we are a mobile intelligence platform. Um, yes, attribution is a core or a base of it. Then we have a forward and backward integrations to our product. We started back in year 2012 from Germany, headquartered out of Berlin. Uh, in these eight years, what we have done is uh, we are a global company now. We have more than 16 offices across the globe with more than 500 employees, right? Uh, these numbers have revived yesterday. 42% uh, of global market share and if you see to the clients, uh, the number of apps who trust or leverage our platform is somewhere around more than 35,000 uh, apps who uses our platform. Uh, can we go next? Uh, so if you see these are the few clients, uh, spe specifically gaming clients who have been leveraging our platform from past a long time. If you see anyone from Zynga to Nantech. Uh, you talk about top games today, Mario, you talk about Pokemon Go, you talk about Microsoft in India, you talk about Play Simple, you talk about GameBerry. They all have been leveraging our app from past a long time, right? Um, so what does we do? So basically we have three product, uh, you know, uh, you basically say product lines. Uh, so first is a measure wherein uh, your attribution part comes into play. We try to identify, um, we help you understand which channel is outperforming for you, not only in terms of install, but what is the post install matrix, right? How many users you have acquired from channel X versus how much revenue you have received and what is the ROI, right? Of that particular channel, you can go drill down from channel to uh, uh, that's network, basic network to a campaign level, to an ad group or ad set level, to a creative, to a sub publisher level, understand which is, which channel is to give me more value. Uh, not only in terms of install, but port install and start putting more efforts or more uh, budgets onto it. So you acquire more users, not only the users who pay more, but who stays in the app for a longer period of time. Then automation is basically the forward and backward integrations to a product. Uh, on the forward integration side, we have something called automating your user acquisition campaign, wherein you put a rule based method saying that um, the channels or the ad sets who has ROS less than more than 7% should, uh, the budget should be reallocated to someone else. So budget, budget monitoring and allocation of budgets can be done over there. On the backward integration side, if I say we have something called audience builder, wherein you create an audience segment, cohort of a user and, and push it to the networks for retargeting and re-engagement. On the product, uh, product side is basically the fraud solution, what we talk about, right? Uh, so next slide. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Shubham. Thanks, Michael. So a little bit about Affle. Uh, Affle is a 14-year-old company. Uh, we are currently uh, based uh, in multiple emerging markets, almost 300-odd team. Uh, 
Uh, what is interesting is that we did an IPO last year and very few companies in this space are a public company. So we got listed in the Bombay Stock Exchange in August. And not just that, we are also accredited by IMDA, which is a Singapore government entity and we are also certified by ISO 2701. So what I'm trying to highlight is we largely very take care of your data and privacy and ourselves being a public company has a lot of compliances. And also we've been acquiring companies in the last uh, 18 to 24 months with uh, someone names like Vizuri, Revex, Media Smart. We recently acquired just, just before the COVID situation happened uh, in February this year. So, what this has really done at Apple is uh, next slide has really helped us to uh, stitch a end to end solution for our advertisers uh, and even game advertisers, right? So, we start with obviously our solution, which is MDMP. Largely a data management platform to help you know who to target, uh, which are the right gamers to acquire. For example, in this case, should I'm looking at mid-core gamers versus casual gamers. So that's where the MDMP comes. After that, uh, we have solutions which are Mask and Revit. Mask is our uh, affiliate solution end-to-end, -end, uh, largely for giving you scale at a lower price point. Uh, we also have a subsection under it called Premium on Devices which is largely working with all OEM devices, whether it is uh, OEM app stores, whether it is uh, Samsung, Xiaomi, Vivo, etc. Uh, as well as we've got some very focused Indian publishers likes of ShareIt, ShareChat, etc. Uh, which we have bundled it and offer it as a solution for anyone who's looking to acquire uh, gamers, etc. And then we also have Revex, which is our mobile focused DSP, which is connected to almost 35 exchanges. SDK networks as well as direct publishers, whether it is a daily hunt uh, or now TikTok, uh, which helps you to acquire users programmatically. Then we have mCreate, which is a sorry, uh, just last slide. Yeah, the mCreate, which is a more of our solution around uh, rich media and video authoring platform, uh, as well as Olive, which is more of our conversational uh, chatbot solution. And then we also have Visuri AC60, which is our omni-channel platform. Uh, which is not just programmatic channels, what just Revex focuses on, but also on social media channels like Facebook, Instagram, as well as uh, the whole own media solution, which is your push notification, app push, email, etc. Et so I think the key takeaway is that at Affil now, today we have solutions across uh, the whole value chain, whether it is DMP to acquisition to retargeting, we've got you covered. And this shows, for example, in terms of the marquee customers, especially in the gaming category we work with, right? So whether it is your real money gaming, like Ace to Three, Rummy Circle, Jungli Rummy, very big in India, or likes of Poker Stars or Poker Bazi, etc. As well as many casual game companies, likes of Zynga, which has a very interesting title, CSR2, or ZMAT from Russia, which has this jigsaw puzzle game, or even mid-core games uh, from Garena, Free Fire, or Inno Games, which makes uh, Forge of Empire. So again, working across casual as well as mid-core India as well as international clients uh, using our solution across both acquisition and retargeting. So that's largely about Apple. Uh, now we'll jump into specific uh, details about gaming. Yes, sure. So before I uh, come to gaming, let me just put it as in what phase we are going and what we are seeing, right? And uh, where this actually report originated. Uh, so we all know that we are going through a, uh, you know, the global population is going through an unprecedented change, right? Which will have a huge impact, not only on us, but even on political, economic or social across the world. Every, including, including ours, have felt the impact in some or the other way. Even when the mobile has been always the integral part of users' life. Uh, so right now, what we'll be talking about, the, the, the trends, what they just have observed, um, in gaming and other verticals, I will be talking specifically about gaming uh, from month of month 2019 and 2020. Discuss some strategies which can work through. Um, and, you know, uh, so if I talk specifically about gaming right now, um, we have seen a huge spike in gaming. If I compare, uh, you know, 2019, March 2019 versus March 2020, we have seen a spike of, say, somewhere around 32, 132%. And if I have to put the big figure of Q1 2020 versus Q1 2019, it has surged by 75%, right? And this is just gaming. 
next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh, the gross growth chart uh, shows the growth of an app in a given moment. Uh, the higher the number of installs increase the score. Uh, in most of the cases, the high score reflects the mix of significant number of installs and decrease in MAU. And this is not true all the time. There's a high probability that the app has a high churn rate, right? It might reflect over there. So if I talk about gaming, gaming receives a high score throughout the year with an average score of 40.4. Uh, but this is not which is like across the year for the entire year. The growth score reduces by the, by an average of 15% uh, by December. The typical phenomena of gaming verticals, right? Uh, though when we know that gaming has been a constant pastime for the users, they keep on trying new titles. And maybe because of this, this reason, there is a high churn in this gaming scenario, right? Um, there's a poll for you if you like to just address. What are the top gaming, uh, you know, categories you prefer, or you play? So we're going to leave the poll. So please be, uh, please feel free to vote. We're going to give you maybe thirty more seconds. We'd love to hear uh, which category of mobile games you prefer to play the most. There's no wrong answer here. Okay, we're seeing some answers come in. I'll give you maybe 15 more seconds if anybody else wants to answer. Still have about half of the people left to vote. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. I will end the poll and here are the results. Oh, got you. Nice. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, Michael, can we move to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, now this is a game, global gaming scenario, right? If you see the mobile yet have to pick, um, the global penetration has still a way to go and reach its zenith. It's a huge opportunity for game developers. Because if you see to the population size across the globe, it's somewhere around 7 billion people, right? And if you see the, con the concentrated mobile gamers are just 1.3 billion players, right? And there's a huge opportunity for everyone to go, right? Uh, I would suggest that the gaming um, developers, right, they need to use the hyper monetization tactics, wherein they should have both IAP and app monetization intact, right? Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, if you see to the user a session time is somewhere around typically 60 to 70 minutes, and um, the gaming developer needs to use the 60 minutes of a user, right? And in, in the best possible way. Um, now, when we know that gaming has, uh, is already a high churn category and at the same time, organics are fading off, uh, most of the game players download game after seeing a ad, a mobile ad. That is very important uh, to keep your user acquisition strategy intact. Uh, try to cohort users and understand which channel ad sets creative brings you most valued users. Uh, learn into that reliable sources as a way to replace your organic and maintain the healthy influx of the newcomers. Right? Uh, when you do this, don't forget uh, to do A-B testing again. And two suggestions, what I would say is you should always look to optimize a campaign on ROS, return on ad spends. Um, on the other hand, you know, mobile ads are no more that it's interesting. Everyone has seen hundreds and thousands of them. So make sure that every target or if you're sending a single impression is happening, is happening to the interest group. The interest group where the user wants or what category is interested in, right? And always reflect the USP of your app or key exciting features, right? It is very, very much important. Right? Uh, Michael, the next slide. Uh, more or less, uh, things haven't changed when it comes to retention. Less than 10% of users are still active in app after, you know, day 10 of the install. And by day 30 is less than 4%. Sports on one hand uh, retains the best on day one. It's somewhere around 32% of users for uh, another round. In comparison, if you see shopping, right? Shopping app retains poorly on day one compared to sport games. 
it's is just about 23% and the pattern holds true for more or less all the verticals and uh, uh, retargeting is often seen a way to approach this problem problem but the truth is retargeting uh, successfully um, you know uh, or retargeting success very widely depends upon vertical to vertical right uh, gaming apps thrive for new users right they all have been thriving or they are looking for new users every day there is a challenge to keep up those users engaged and never and, and my suggestion is never let them uh, be inactive in the first place uh, most time what we have observed for shopping the um, you know the high number of attributions are basically reattribution that means low retention post d1 right now shoppers are willing to return to app when there is a product they want but with gaming the scenario is different the trend is once the user is gone they are gone for good that means every time you retarget or reengage with the user this means um, you know your message needs to be aimed to the current users and not the last one if the user hits a game over they should automatically become eligible to target for the next level right and if i have to put a number to you know what is the efficiency score of a retargeting or reengagement campaign what we normally see it's somewhere around 3% of the total audience base of retargeting or reengagement right uh, Ma Michael, next one. Right. Over to you, Ankit. Cool. Thanks, Shubham. So again, I think uh, while this data was great from a global lens, let's look what's happening in India. Yeah. And before jumping into what happened during the COVID nineteen, let's zoom out, right? So if you think like games have always play a very critical role and interesting part in gaming uh, Indian mythology as well as history. Uh, if you've been reading some mythology, and I've been a student of that, I realized that even in our uh, like Puranishads, they will see that Lord Shiva or Parvati is enjoying a game of Pachisi. Or, for example, in Mahabharata, the whole plot, if I can put it that way, is around the Chaucer and what happened around that, and all of us know that, right? Or even the Mughals uh, enjoying a game of chess, which in fact inspired a very iconic movie, uh, Shatranj Ke Khiladi. Uh, in the 1970s and 80s. So, gaming has always played a very important role in our culture. Uh, and then obviously there was the whole revolution of technology and it went to Xboxes and Vs. And like everything else, uh, mobile really democratized gaming, whether it was the smartphones explosion, uh, cheap data thanks to Geo, or even the friction for payments reducing from credit cards to UPI. Gaming has really picked up uh, uh, in India over the last few Month, years and decades, I can say. But what really the whole great lockdown did was really accentuated this growth. And let's understand what happened and what was the impact because of that, right? So, with the great Indian lockdown, if I can put it that way, people had much more time to play. Uh, they wanted to escape the current reality, and that's why they were engrossed in playing games. Not just that, what it also did was that it uh, became a means of social entertainment among friends and families. I'm sure all of us would have stories to share where uh, people who are divided by borders got united by games like Ludo and uh, Rummy and Bingo and Poker etc. And there are many more stories, all of us anecdotes one can share. What also this uh, social distancing did was increase the base of demographic. Right. So historically, if you see Google, Google Play has done a lot of interesting studies that gamers are largely in that 18 to 25 male largely single who are playing these games and largely the real money games, which was the one, as we all know, is really popular in India. Uh, but what this did was that it now that it became a means of social entertainment, a much bigger demography between say 25 to I'll say 65 kind of audiences started playing games. A classic example is Bingo or Housey or Tambola, how we call it here in India. And you realize that that became very popular as a means to engage between families. I think what is doing very unique about India is uh, what we call vocal for local uh, because a lot of these gamers are asking for local content, right? So whether it is the avatar you have in your games or whether if there are these context of cities like in a endless running game, Subway Surfer or Temple Run, they would want Indian context, Indian cities uh, or even the payment, right? So unlike the West where the payment was through either the Google store or the Apple pay and it was quite expensive. Obviously that has changed over a period of time. Now they have enabled UPI. 
but even here for example because now you are getting many more new first time gamers you really need to think of your pricing and maybe one time pricing rather than having those various point where you try to induce them so maybe make them like you pay once and you pay it for like the one year kind of a subscription etc so i think that is very interesting which is happening and what is also interesting is that because with tiktok becoming such a phenomena in this country a lot of tier 2 tier 3 people have come online and who are playing games and there are these tiktok influencers which can help them to start playing games but what is also then important is that you have to really handhold all these first time gamers to even how to make payments so uh, like for example ludo king which is quite popular in fact the number one game in its category has created videos on youtube which one can go through Uh, to make payments through upi and a lot of hand holding is required so if you are a game publisher you need to think of how do you educate and evangelize to some of these first time gamers through whether it is regional content whether it is one time pricing or even how to do the pricing phenomenon so i think that is very unique which has been happening during the whole uh, covid situation next slide but but while this was all great there's one another stark reality which i'm sure all of us who are game publishers would realize is that there is this huge divide between the top 10 games and rest of the gaming company right so while these games brought the world closer this uh, stark reality hit that like if you see in this scenario that top 10 games almost drove so 40% of downloads but 94% of revenue so which is quite stark right and this is i have taken a section in gaming action uh, from the play store in india for april and if you go across various categories you will see this that stark divide that if you are not in the top 10 even if you have good downloads the kind of money you will be making is much lesser and this really uh, became even more obvious during these times i think maybe at this point of time uh, i think we can take a quick poll uh, to see what are the kind of challenges some of the gaming uh, folks in fraternity who has joined faces and then we can talk a little bit about this so again everyone has 45 seconds so uh, please choose one of the following statements um if neither of them apply to you please click other we'd love to hear what you think <clears throat> We have a bit more time. Encourage you to vote. So maybe fifteen more seconds. Okay, we're seeing some interesting answers. Maybe ten more seconds. About halfway there. If anyone else wants to vote. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and here we go. interesting so so almost 32% across both not able to do iaps as well as retaining the so exactly right? so this is exactly what uh, if you see i am talking about that if i look from this lens there are largely three key challenges any game publisher developer faces one what i call is the uh, players versus installer right so again uh, if you go on google play today and approximately if i'm not wrong 39% of all download happens for games which is quite significant right now today if in an app first economy right where you have apps from e-commerce healthcare now to education almost 40% are still games so a lot of people are downloading the games but not many are actually paying uh, playing the games right so that whole dichotomy of players versus installers because a lot of people install but we all know that very soon they will uninstall and they're not playing games enough so i think that is one problem which uh, is very significant uh, in india as well as globally the other obviously as people called out is retention versus churn right like all of us know that uh, because with the churns is so high and i think shubham covered that almost by d30 only 4% of my people keep the game and a lot of them churn so this is a constant problem and obviously as game developers you look at d1 d3 d7 and how do you really ensure that you are able to retain your uh, whales if i can put it and whales largely in the gaming context is people who really pay for game right so how do i ensure that players also become payers so these are very real challenges which any gaming app any game publisher at faces and i thought we'll share some of our learnings working with so many different genre of games across regions what they are doing to really 
uh, solve some of these. Obviously, there are no easy answers, but some best practices, some learning we would share uh, with uh, you all. Next thing. Correct. So I think acquisition obviously is a very important aspect. Uh, and today, if you've been in the business of acquisition, you would have uh, tried two different channels, right? There's a whole affiliate channel, which is largely massive scale, whether it is incentivized or but you, uh, uh, otherwise, but you would have seen that it is fraught with fraud, etc. So what is happening? And again, we have the advantage point to look across the world that a lot of these acquisitions are moving from pure play affiliate to programmatic channels. Uh, and we have been working with many of these clients we mentioned on the programmatic channel. Now, when I say programmatic, what it means is this kind of supply is all through exchanges from Google, Mopub, Iron Source, Unity, where we know this is quality supply which is 100% fraud free. Plus what we do is we layer our own audience modeling uh, algorithm. And over the last uh, 12 years of our existence, we have developed our proprietary algorithm, what I call AI cube, which is a, a mix of app intelligence because we have integrated with app stores, both Google play and Apple and understand various uh, signals you can get from them because they've exposed this on open APIs. We marry it with our own audiences. Again, if you recall, we, talked about that we have our own DMP which we have built over a period of time. So we have built our own audience layer and then we marry with our own machine learning algorithms. Uh, the whole AI is applied to it to figure out who's the right player rather than just an installer. And we really help uh, working with multiple algorithms, A-B testing to figure out this. Not just that, we have also made it completely transparent. So the whole Revex platform which is our mobile focus DSP uh, is completely transparent across media creatives and audience. So you have a dashboard where anyone can go check out what are the relevant media sources or supply which is working for you. Uh, what are the creative, whether it is playable ads versus rewarded video versus banner which is working you and what kind of audiences uh, it is working. So I think we really focused on programmatic as a channel to drive acquisition. Next slide. I think the other interesting challenge, which is a colliery to is activation, right? So we get a lot of installs, but then people do nothing. And this is classical case, for example, in social casinos and real money gamings, where we work today very closely in India, where a lot of people would install a Remy app or a poker app or a fantasy league app, but they'll not do the first deposit. So now what we do is we really try to optimize through these downstream events whether it is a CPA or a cost per registration or sometimes we have return on advertising spend. That's where a USP, right? Because if a lot of programmatic channels are largely brand heavy, they'll say buy on CPM versus we can let you buy on all these flexible models of CPR or CPA. And we try to really optimize the whole algorithm to the downstream metrics. So it's not as good as getting the install, but did he or the player make the first install, first deposit, etc. So we do that through our uh, machine learning algorithm and that's what Revex speciality is. So, sorry. Uh, so again, uh, as I said, uh, we also work for activation where we help downstream uh, in events just beyond registration for users uh, and uh, advertisers to do that. Yep. Next slide. I think this is very interesting and this is very unique, right? So one of the other key aspects for any game developer is reach and breaking clutter, right? Because if 40% of the downloads are on gaming, there's a lot of clutter in each genre of gaming. Uh, so, so what we've done is uh, at Apple, we uh, offer something called premium on devices, uh, what, uh, which is an alternate to uh, the Google play store, because in India, uh, you have to realize that a lot of uh, new first time users are coming. What we have done is we have partnered with OEMs like Samsung, Vivo, Oppo, et cetera, which gives you almost 150 million monthly active users. And almost 87% of users who are coming, uh, who are new shipments of uh, devices, uh, we are able to reach them through this placements on Apple pod. Uh, not just that because uh, it is not on Google play uh, and you can be able to break your clutter, it gives you higher visibility on the play store. And you also these app stores from these OEM because they're so native have really integrated with the whole uh, phone uh, OS. So whether it is through recommendations on the home screen or the lock screen, or for example, when a first time user who comes, when he or she opens the phone, there's a whole message which comes and you can show them app recommendations on this. And we've also integrated with very India focused apps, right? So whether publishers which are quite big in this market, so whether it is share chat or share it or Zender, etc. So typically if you are a 
global gaming company or an indian gaming company who's really looking to break the clutter and look at scale this offering uh, apple pod is very very uh, interesting from our staple next slide i think this is what also somebody was asked right how do i make my uh, gamers to really uh, transact because this is like the holy grail if i can say to drive more iap especially for gamers in india and i think there also uh, especially for this kind of a use case we have built algorithms where you divide the whole uh, gaming audience into these minos dolphins and whales and then you really target those specific whales to help them come back uh, whether and we can do it through playable ads we do it through rewarded ads or even sometimes trying different price points so you can do a lot of ab testing i think one of the other problem a lot of time game developers face is that there was an active cohort of users who were quite active but then they almost don't come back on the game so uh, to share some of those device ids and some kind of gamers we try to build some kind of a algorithm and try to find those whales back on the internet right because remember we are integrated with almost 35 uh, plus exchanges which gives us almost 85% reach in india and we try to get those gamers back on your game so that they can start playing and hopefully that will help you to uh, get those whales and make them iaps also we provide you uh, lift so last last slide uh, last slide yeah we also provide uh, incrementality uh, study right so if you been aware of this there is something called lift study where you do a lift between control and expose and you try to run various campaigns to find the incrementality you are able to drive through that so we also run that through revex platform to run this control test and there are various algorithms you figure out so lot of data sciences a lot of machine learning is required and over the period of time you build a very strong team who help you do all these experiments ab testing yeah and i think this is also which came up in the poll right like driving retention is one of the biggest challenge for a lot of game publishers but what is interesting is like if you see industry reports unlike some of the other categories like e-commerce travel fashion or even subscription based uh, products now right whether it is a ott platform video on demand or even education tech of late gamer gaming for fraternity does not use retention a lot uh, and in current times when cash is king right we really need to think through can we do more retargeting and reengagement because retention is the new growth if i can put it that way right now obviously as game publishers developers you look at certain metrics like maus daus or even stickiness which is your daus by maus but i think what is interesting is that if you have enough scale you can really segment your users across multiple such cohorts and figure out can you do interesting reengagement retargeting campaigns so again for example uh, we work with some of the mid core games out there and they had this whole challenge that they figured out that if a cohort reaches a certain level in the game then he or she sticks with the game and hopefully also does this a lifetime uh, like uh, value increases because they do iaps so they identified those cohort and then we started reengaging with those across the internet on other games on other lifestyle and similar as where we could find these gamers and started to reengage and retarget them or for example another use case where another mid core game where they said that i want to really drive uh, subscriptions but what happens is that if i know that a gamer reaches this particular stage in the gameplay or he or she does this login then i have a very strong confidence that they go ahead and make the iaps so you create those interesting segments and then you give it to someone like us who has built this expertise on reengagement retargeting and not just that we also provide you an account management support so there is a bunch of people who been there done that so they take all that expertise together then they try to work with you hand hold you with figuring out this course and then running reengagement retargeting campaigns and we can say that because i share that across a lot of these categories from social uh, casinos to casuals to even mid core we have worked with some of the big gaming companies so a lot of that learning is there which is out there for uh, the game publisher fraternity to utilize through our game uh, account managers and customer success so this big search brings us to uh, adjust the audience builder i was talking about forward and backward integrations so basically this audience builder is one part of automation which focuses on retargeting and reengagement of users right um, you know retargeting users is a proven way to drive growth but it's at the same point in time it is very challenging right 
gather all the necessary data required for a network to do retargeting campaign everything can be you know you can forget those challenges with audience builder right with audience builder you can define a audience using your data and um, networks can just act immediately upon um, whatever data you sync with them right um, michael next slide with audience builder growth folks um, you know so basically what we try to do is we try to empower you to build a detailed audience segment uh, with your in house adjust data uh, send instantly um, to all the partners um, your audience could be as detailed as you like right target user based upon uh, days of install which uh, event they triggered which device they are from and much more right once you create this audience you all have to do is you have to create a dynamic urls and you know and just give it to affil to just do retargeting and re engagement right you can create n number of filters you can do something like the people who have installed the app in last 7 days has triggered a event called a registration but has not done purchase so i just want to push this target audience i want to create a cohort of this users push it to apple for retargeting and re engagement of these users right uh next slide it's a very simple mechanism to do it uh but when you do retargeting and reengagement you like to do tracking as well you know you want to understand what is the efficiency of retargeting and reengagement campaign while you do that i would say always enable deep linking and deferred deep linking uh, it is very much crucial and very much important so basically what happens uh, so suppose if a user already has your app he sees an ad which is been rendered on his screen he clicks on it the schema of the system will identify whether the user has already an app or he needs to go right to download and install first right so if he already has an install then he is pushed to the right content page and user experience is always intact it doesn't dies off right uh, similarly if the user doesn't have an app then he will be first redirected to an app store and play store to install an app once he installs an app then he is been redirected to the right content page again by this the user experience doesn't dies off it keeps intact um, and is experience with your app always increases right so it is very much important to use deep linking and deferred deep link while you are doing the retargeting or reengagement campaign uh yes this brings us to the next which is like fraud right uh, so what i just do and what we have so instead of uh, instead of going uh, after the device or the user like most of the ad fraud protection or ad detection services do we focus on rejecting fraudulent signal that fraudsters rely on right for stealing your advertising spend um, create um, you know creating robust protection against the ad fraud while passing on legitimate traffic and insoles uh, many ad fraud solutions are available in the market um they only detect ad fraud and they don't work on a real time basis leaving you know leaving you or leaving everything on a client to clean or fix the problem but with adjust fraud protection what happens is uh, you get a comprehensive ad fraud protection right that proactively stops frauds uh, because um, it hits your data because or before it hits your data or stats and so you can really focus on your growth right you can be a growth engine for your company and you can just leave the fraud part on adjust we'll take care of that right uh, now in the following slides uh, you'll see uh, number of frauds what happens uh, if i say a consolidated number of 100% out of that 16% goes to click spamming uh, in click injection is somewhere around 27% as dk spoofing is highest which is like 37% right so how, how you can you know mitigate these risks right what all systems we have in place to measure them to help you right so and what kind of frauds right uh, michael can we go to the next slide right so these are the water regress waterfall mechanism what we have uh, in our fraud protection suite for malfund advertising id to uh, sdk signature anonymous ip click injection distribution modeling right and what kind of fraud is being mitigated is something like click spamming right fraudsters send wave of clicks so they get post the organic installs and make you pay for the installs you shouldn't have paid right 
um, device farming, device farming, um, uh, an emulated device mechanism, right? Hide behind the proxies or data centers uh, in order to just pump, follow installs and gain more money. Um, SDK spoofing, right? Uh, Frosters, basically what happens, Frosters learns uh, how an MMP SDK works in order to fake the installs and signals at scale. And what happens, you bleed ad fraud, you bleed budget, right? Your budget dries off, right? Um, this brings us to the last one, which is like click injection. Uh, Frosters hijack installed by inserting flake clicks around the point of install. Uh, we sweeps the uh, inside unfair or increase user acquisition number, um, and you have to pay for uh, those users, right? Uh, so by by following these regress methodologies or a waterfall modeling, we can help you mitigate those uh, ad fraud risk, right? Yes, uh, Michael, can we go to the next slide? Data privacy is on a DNA. Yes, uh, Adjust is one and only 100% GDPR and CCPA compliant company. We take data privacy to a heart. Um, you know, our data, is, data on our centers is 100% secure. There is no chance of fraud or theft of poor data, right? So you can rely on Adjust, right? Uh, across the globe, we are handling thousands and tons and millions of data points, right? Uh, and, and it's pretty well secure, right? Uh, next. Ankit, over to you. Cool. So I think, I think great if you made it to last slide. Uh, this is the last slide. So again, uh, just to uh, reiterate and summarize, uh, if you are working with Affil and NetJest, you've really got you covered across all your needs. So whether it is in terms of acquisition or re-engagement, retargeting, uh, again, through a Revex platform, we can give you scale, uh, whether it is on exchanges, SDK networks, direct publishers, you get 100% transparency across media, creative and audience. And also with Adjust, you have the whole segmentation builder and ad fraud suit, which really cover all the uh, bad elements in this ecosystem, right? Like, like it or not, there are so many bad elements. So we really have got you covered across the whole value chain uh, through the solution of both Adjust and Afro. Cool. Thanks, Michael. I think now we can take certain questions. Yeah, thank you, Shubham and Akid. That was really, really insightful. Um, thank you to everybody who ended up uh, staying until the end. Um, we're now going to open it up to the Q&A. So if you have any questions for uh, Shubham or Akid, please feel free to write them in the Q&A and they will take a look and they will answer them. So I think, uh, Shubham, if you take a look, there is a question uh, for Adjust, if you care to answer it. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> I was on mute. Yes, Simran. Um, install level, click level, um, at both the level, these fraud uh, detection is being done. And uh, we make sure that every fraud, if it's a fraud, right, it's been blocked and only the legitimate uh, installs or numbers or attributions are always shown on the dashboard, not the fraud ones, right? Before it hits your stats or the data, we remove the fraud ones. So you, the data, the whole point of having a fraud is that once you have the data, right, it's a genuine data. So tomorrow after two hours, if you wish to retarget or re-engage the audience, right, you're not re-engaging and re, you know, running retargeting campaigns on a fraud device, right? So that's the whole point to do everything on a real, real time basis with adjust. Does that answer your question? Hopefully. Okay. Uh, if, they, if they still have any further questions, I'm sure they're going to ask. Um, Ankit, I think you can check it out. There's a yes. question for you. Yeah. yeah, I'll just repeat the question. The question is, does Apple Revex work for a new game? And it's a very good question. I think we also had someone who had asked, like, uh, why, if there are so many programmatic stack, why do affiliates still work? And uh, why is that not there? So it's a very relevant question. And I think at Apple, we've really covered both parts of the spectrum because both uh, Mars and Revex are solving a specific piece of the puzzle problem. So the uh, affiliates are in our world, we call it mass is largely for uh, giving you scale. So typically when you're trying to launch a new game, what you do is you use a solution like mass where you get good installs, a lot of installs. Uh, and that what it helps is, for example, help you uh, improve your organic rankings on the play store, right? Because if you've been in this fraternity, you realize that previously there used to be incentivized downloads, etc. And 
one of the only way it used to work obviously it was fraud with fraud and there was a lot of download but it would give you some organic jump in your ranking if that is important to you but what we have also done is now that we've partnered with a lot of these alternate app stores whether it is from samsung or xiaomi which are quite oems and we've got you covered so that is where mass or the affiliate channel works but as your uh, evolution happens of the game right you've gotten certain scales now the question becomes about reengagement the question becomes of of these installers how do i get them first time deposit you start asking the questions on ltv etc and that is where revex comes into picture revex is more about that once you got a certain scale then you start looking at how do i use it for driving ltv how do i use it for driving uh, say for example ros because i have got certain scale i have got say 5000 downloads a day but now how do i reach to 10000 20000 50000 i want to go across geographies i want to do a lot of ab testing whether banner is working versus uh, say for example uh, playable ads i want to look at is unity ads right for me or google is the right platform so when you start having these questions and these questions are more relevant when you got that initial launch phase is where revex could be a very good solution for you so um, our answer to that question is not either or depends on your evolution early on mass may be right strategy but as you scale and you want to get stable and you start looking at ltv that revex becomes the right solution for you yeah nice Uh, so uh, uh, while the presentation was going on, I saw Rahul Sahni raising his hand. Rahul, you have any specific questions for me or Ankit? We are happy to answer. And the floor is open to anybody else. Um, feel free to type anything in the Q and A. Anything related to adjust or Rafael, please feel free. If you're okay for questions and uh, you don't really have anything more, feel free to let us know in the chat as well. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I think I got one question, Michael, uh, which I shared with my team. Maybe it's an interesting question. Like, is supply important or is audience important, right? Because this is a classical dilemma for a game company that should I focus on as many supply sources or do I only focus on audiences? And I yeah. think the answer is audiences because what we have learned over the last uh, several years working with game developers is that. there are certain audience for a certain genre of game which only works with that genre so for example if you are a mid core user game you really uh, uh, will be overlapping with other mid core games and that's one of the reason for example why rewarded video works so well uh, because typically you would see in one of the uh, mid core game another mid core ad uh, because the audience is very focused and they only largely play that game right so whether you are a free fire or a pubg kind of user versus for example if you are a casual gamer typically you will be playing more casual games or you will graduate to real money gaming and that's why we see a lot of overlap between casual games and real money games and we've seen that if you are a rng player like a rummy or a poker or even say a fantasy league you show ads on a lot of these casual games you do very very well so i think audiences is always very important and that's why that is one of the very important thing you need to chase as a game acquisition manager rather than more supply sources because if those supplies are not relevant you'll be really burning your budgets so the audience is much more important than inventory yeah. right thank you ankit and i see uh, viraj singh uh, is raising his hand here this person would like to ask a question so we're just going to wait for them to maybe type it out and Ooh. isha as well Again, please, if you have a question, uh, please write it out uh, in the Q and A. It's at the bottom of your screen. If you just push that, uh, you'll be able to write a question, and we'll be able to see it and answer it. So we'll give you a few minutes to do that. And one of the questions that we had actually Shubham um during the uh, from the registrations was uh how much fraud uh there happens to be in this vertical in the gaming vertical. Uh, so the stats which are showed um uh, so is is the portion so it's not about what how 
much of fraud, but what kind of fraud, mm -hmm. right? That should rather be asked, right? It's a big industry. What kind of fraud? So specific to vertical, there are specific kind of fraud, which is being seen, right? If I talk about, um, you know, if I talk about gaming, gaming has a lot of bots and click injection, right? If I talk about uh, e-commerce, they have a lot of e SDK spoofing. So it's the fraud is something which is widely dependent upon the vertical where you go. And second is not fraud, but what kind of fraud you have. And then you drill down around it, right? Great, thank you. And I think we're getting a few questions here. So um, from Sumit Bedi in the chat, we have a question. Uh, does a loyalty program make sense for gaming apps? If anybody would like to answer maybe, that. Maybe I'll take a shot at that. Uh, so a lot depends on what genre of game you are in, right? So uh, it, again, if you look at, for example, uh, genre like hyper casual, casual, uh, the churn rate in this kind of an app is very, very high, right? Like even overall, if you, as Shubham was showing, 4% is the only users who stick with you in a month. And if you look double down, double click and look at gaming genre, this number will be even more higher. Versus if you are more of a mid core, hardcore kind of a game, the stickiness is much longer. And that's why, for example, you need to look at LTV, which is longer, which is six months to one year, because you've seen that over a period of time, this works. Or uh, even for example, in Indian context, Rami especially enjoys very low, high LTV. So if you're in that kind of a category, obviously you can look at a loyalty program where you, for your whales, you want to treat them better. I know there are certain uh, card companies in India, which also organizes offline events, not now, but yeah, last year we're trying to organize offline events for some of the top gamers, give them some kind of a privileged star status, which was adding a lot to the loyalty. And obviously that built even more stickiness. Because one of the other things you need to think of is something called the K factor, uh, which is very relevant in gaming. And typically if you are getting one download uh, through paid acquisition, and if that user is able to get three more organic downloads, right? Because he or she is inviting her friends uh, or family to come and play that game. That will help you drive more uh, organic downloads, right? So they're also in some sense, not loyalty, but yeah, it is helping you to get more organic downloads. So K factor is one of that uh, term which, uh, which game developers look at. So again, long story uh, short, if you are casual, hyper casual, no. If you are more mid core uh, or real money gaming, especially Rami, yes. Perfect, thank you. And I think we have two more questions uh, for you Ankit and the uh, Q&A. Sorry, Michael, can you read because there's so many now. <laughs> ah, yes. So. Uh, the first one uh, is about uh, audience segments. Shubham, you want to answer it? I think you clicked it. Okay, just a sec. Uh, so audience segment, yes. Um, understand what kind of audience um, you, know, you need to build. So any person who was available in an app, from, who installed an app for the last seven days, has done registration but has not done purchase, by filtering it out, you can create a small audience segment as in the people who have installed in last seven days has done registration, but has not done purchase or say it could be leveled up or level two and then purchase, right? You can create a audience segment of this, putting your criteria and you can push it to, you know, affil for retargeting and re-engagement. Right. Right. Got it. Uh, the other question was uh, about uh, gaming apps. Uh, we see a challenge of repeated deposits. I think I think this is a very important problem, and we spoke about it. Uh, installers to depositors, right? A lot of users will install the app, but will not make the first purchase. And I think this is a very key problem of re-engagement, retargeting, which gaming fraternity have to start addressing, especially now because retention is the new growth uh, in current times. So I think that is where uh, you need to work with partners who just don't look at installs, but also downstream metrics of uh, deposits or a certain uh, event in the game, which you know is the trigger point that the LTP of that user is higher. So yes, you can do it. And the way you do it is you define those events in your post backs. If you're using adjust uh, MMP and then all these events are already there, you map that and you share this to a partner like us. And then we try to uh, optimize on that particular event rather than the install event and over a period of time able to get scale as well as quality for 
uh, that particular event we are looking at. And again, uh, we can share that as experience because we work with a lot of social casino games in India, and we look at first-time deposit as our metrics for optimization. Yep. All right. Thank Viraj you. Will, is, Viraj, you have any any specific question for Adjust or Afil? Um, there was also another question, actually, um, for you, Shabam. Um, it was about marketing automation. Um, what they wanted to know what some new products for game developers are uh, from Adjust. Yeah, so marketing automation, as I told, there are two wings to it, forward and backward. The forward wing basically helps you automate your campaigns. Um, if I normally say you don't have to log on to multiple network dashboard in order to optimize a bit. You can just do it in a single view and from a single platform, you'll have all the controls synced in one single platform. Understand uh, the ROS, where you're getting the maximum ROS and you can start optimizing the bit, not only in terms of, uh, you know, on, on a network level, but you can go deeper at the campaign level, ad group or ad set level or at the creative level, right? And uh, the um, the much robust um, automation is is coming is 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 going to be live very soon, which will have a filtered method saying that uh, any um, you know ad set or creative uh, wherein the ROS return on ad spend is less than seven percent or more than seven percent. If it's less than seven percent, then I should uh, you know start saying that reallocate the budget from this particular creative or ad set to the next performing one right so they can they can um, you know there's a method wherein they can give all the rules what they're looking in a user acquisition and they can start automating the campaign the uh, the algorithms is going to work in that fashion as in whatever keys they have put or they have set right great thank you shivam <laughs> So um, unless there are any more questions, I think uh, that is about it uh, for the time. Is there so, anything else you'd like to say, Ankit or Shivan, before we close it off? No, I would say thank you everyone for joining our session. You know, if you have any direct questions, please feel free. Uh, please reach out to me at shubham at the rate at jazz.com. Um, don't stop. Just feel free. Just write an email and I, I, I will be there to help you out in the best possible way. Right. Same here. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and I think uh, especially if you're a gamer or in this game industry, right? You are such an interesting place that you play games for a living and you make games. So keep doing that. Uh, and what I can share is that for the last few years and almost a decade and a half in this industry, I've seen that the evolution of gaming and we're on the right track. Uh, and definitely more and more uh, gamers are joining in India, more and more them playing games, etc. and now paying for games. Uh, and if all the machines take away the things the way automation is happening, we'll only be playing games maybe in a decade from now. So keep the good work, guys. Great. Last Perfect. but not the least, thank you to Team Afil and everyone who has made this possible. Thank you, Ankit. Thank you, Rohit, Michael, and everyone. Right. Thank you, Team. Thanks, Thanks. Michael. Thanks. Thank you for every, to everybody. And again, for everybody that's still here, if you have any questions for Shabam, please contact them at shabam at adjust.com and for Ankit from Afil at ankit.rawal at afil.com. Thank you for joining once again and uh, we hope to see you at the next one. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.